Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for tonight is Romans 8, 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Here is the reading of our text. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. I was watching one of those Christmas specials the other day. In it, there were two adult daughters who were estranged, hadn't talked in years. And the one daughter was hoping to mend everything at Christmas time. She had this grand plan. They were going to have a great old-fashioned Christmas at their old home, which none of them lived at anymore. And so she's checking into it, and what does she discover? But this house that had been empty for who knows how long had just sold to a handsome young man. I guess I don't have to tell you how the story ends, do I? One of the daughters falls in love with a handsome young man. Sure enough, they're able to have their good old-fashioned Christmas in their old family home that they grew up in. They had all of these wonderful family traditions. They even found the old family Christmas ornaments and decorated the young man's house with their new, their old ornaments. And they went to church, and the family gets together, and it's so warm and loving. And of course, one of the daughters falls in love with the handsome young man. Now, the story certainly had a romantic element. But the main message, or the big message anyways, is that Christmas is about family. The importance of family, the importance of family love, and all of those sorts of things. And it was those sorts of traditions that brought the two sisters back together. The message for anybody who is watching is that Christmas is about family. Family traditions, family dinners, family getting together and opening presents on Christmas morning. Families going to church together. Family. Of course, I don't think anybody would want to deny that Christmas is a family time. I myself, I'm looking forward to my son arriving from Texas this holiday season. And I haven't seen him in close to a year. And I'm hoping to have some quality family time with him and maybe take him and, and, and my grandchildren out ice skating. Have some of those wonderful family memories. With this sort of thought in mind, it's no wonder at all that people think of Christmas and the meaning of Christmas as being family. And so, in light of this, I think it's worthwhile to note that Christmas started as a family gathering. It was a small family, yes, father and a mother and a newborn child, but a family. We heard part of that first Christmas family's story earlier out of Matthew, and we'll hear the rest of it next week. Of course, much of what we associate with the family time part of Christmas was lacking at that first Christmas. There were no Christmas trees. There were no brightly wrapped presents. There were no carolers outside singing, O oh, little town of Bethlehem. There were no twinkling lights. But there was a family. There was Daddy Joseph, Mommy Mary, and Baby Jesus, the original Christmas family. But you may be surprised to know that there was somebody else there, somebody who doesn't jump right off of the page when you read the story. There are other members of the Christmas family there. I don't know if you noticed in our epistle reading but Paul wrote to those Roman Christians and he called them brothers. Now today, all sorts of people will run around saying, you know, my brother, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, people in lodges call each other brothers and people who are, are in any sort of an association together might call each other brothers. 
But in the first century, people didn't do that. In the first century, the only people that you called brothers were people that had the same mommy and daddy as you. The first group in recorded history to call non-blood family people brothers were Christians. Paul is, with that word saying, that we are all part of the same family. And he even tells us the name of that family or who the patriarch of that family is. For he says that we are sons of God in verse 14. And then in verse 16, he calls us children of God. So that's the family that we are in. He says we have been adopted into this family of God and are so much a part of this family that we can even address God as Abba, Father. Now, Abba is an Aramaic word, which if we were to translate it into English, really, would be Daddy. That would be the closest thing we have. I want you to stop for a minute and think about that word, Daddy. If you are adopted when you are 10 and 15, or 15 or something like that, you might call your adoptive father Dad or Father, but most likely you won't call him Daddy. Daddy is a word that you learn when you're one or two years old. And then as you get older, you, you know, you're 10 or 50, you just, or, or even older, you just keep using it. But it's a word you pick up when you're very, very, very young. So it is a very emotional word depicting a very special relationship. For Paul, our connection to the first Christmas family is not just legal, is not just intellectual, it is also an emotional one, a daddy one. It is so real and complete that Paul goes on to call us fellow heirs with our older brother Jesus. We are children of God. We have been made so by the Holy Spirit who has given us new birth by the washing of water and the word in baptism. Being born or, or adopted into the family of God means that we have actually an old family. And I really don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about that old family today. Suffice it to say that our old family is the family of our old sinful nature. It is the family of death. Paul speaks about it in our epistle lesson. But now we are part of the Christmas family. The old family of death has no hold on us, not legally, not intellectually, not emotionally. Sure, we get drawn, drawn back into the old ways, but our new family, our new daddy, is always ready to pick us up and brush us off and grant us forgiveness and continue to teach us and show us the ways of our new family, the traditions of the Christmas family. That actually really is what confession and absolution is all about. But instead of thinking of the old family of death, I want to go back to our Christmas family in our baptismal connection. Jesus, when he was talking to Nicodemus, says that when we are baptized, we are born again of water and the Holy Spirit. Paul tells the Galatians that we are baptized, that when we are baptized, we put on Christ. In Romans 6, Paul tells us that we are united with Jesus in our baptism. Such passages could easily be multiplied. The point is that we are adopted into the Christian family and united with Jesus. And indeed, it's not like any other adoption, for it is also called a new birth. By a miracle, we are born anew into the Christmas family. Through baptism, then, we are with that first Christmas family. Indeed, through baptism, we are lying in the manger, connected as we are to the entire life of Jesus. His conception is connected to our conception. 
and turns a conception that passes on a sin nature to a conception that passes on the nature of the Christmas family. His birth is connected to our birth and turns the birth of the sinner, birth of a sinner, into the birth of a saint. The connection continues right through to our death, which by baptism is connected to the death of Jesus, turning the death of a sinner into the death of a child of God, one who will be raised on the last day to glory with the rest of our Christmas family. So when we look at a Christmas crash this year and look at Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, the shepherds, the wise men, and the angels, remember the unseen members of that scene as well. You and the rest of our Christmas family are also present, not as visitors like the wise men or the shepherds, but as family members, as brothers and sisters, as children of the Heavenly Father. So, is Christmas about family? I guess we have to say, yes. It is about the family of God, a family we are all part of by grace through the gift of faith. It is about my family, and your family, and all the families that are blessed to say, Abba, Father, to our Heavenly Father. In our psalm, we chanted that we are to remember all the benefits of God. Our Christmas family connection is certainly one of those benefits that we celebrate during this festive time of year. Amen. May the peace of God which passes human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.